Hello everyone and welcome to a very strange um, Jewels in the Dark video. This is for the H... I don't even know. This is for the, this is for the nurses, the care workers, the frontline workers. Um, this is for all the people that I supply uh, these headbands to. It's an assemble, disassemble, uh, troubleshoot sort of a video and I hope it helps in some respect. So you'll get these headbands all put together and assembled except for a wee band at the back which could be an elastic band or a piece of string or in some respects some nurses are using tourniquets uh, but either way um, whatever actually just holds it on your head a lot more simpler. Now there are many designs of face shields out there I stuck with this one. It takes a little bit longer to make than the others, but it, in my opinion, has a much more secure face shield uh, attachment. It's got three pins here and, and holes here, and it's got a nice slot for everything to put in. So I'm gonna run through how to assemble it, how to disassemble it, etc., etc. This band itself is on its way down to a very good friend of mine, Josh Triffitt, uh, down in Harlow near London. His um, his partner, Katie, a wonderful mm -hmm. person, is one of the frontline workers. She's visiting homes, etc. And when I found out the level of PPE she had, I thought, right, we'll hook up by crook, we'll get this down to her today. Um, so hopefully she'll be able to use this. Uh, I don't know what else to say guys, I suppose it's really just getting straight into it. Just got a parcel through the door, I got my square hot end um, delivered nearly a month early uh, and this came all the way from China so possibly things are, are improving over there as we, as we see. So just to run through what the hot end is, here we go, we have metal block and my uh, my plastic material goes through this Bowden tube, comes, it's all unraveled obviously, and it comes through this heat sink and into the, uh, met, through the metal block and then comes out here out of this nozzle and it gets laid down in layers. And so my original one was broken and the, the break was generally just on this one tiny little wire here, this little white wire goes into the screw that's the thermostat and it was fluctuating all over the place which would mean that sometimes this was flowing nicely and other times it would be too cold so it wouldn't come out at all and you'd have broken destroyed prints. So I reluctantly waited through to May to get this. Um, trust me guys this video is going out today so this is April, I think God almighty, what date is it? Is it April the 2nd, the 3rd or something like that? Uh, so it's come a month early, but I was forced with requirements to go to Amazon and get this uh, two to three times the price um, and to get it delivered last Saturday. So that's actually increased production of these bands. My laminator broke. Quite happy put up some photographs of that break in a moment. Uh, managed to fix it, but I am having failings coming through. So the reason for this video is to literally show you how to assemble, disassemble, get rid of this sheet, put in a new one, etc. Start with, I'm using A4 laminate sheet, 150 microns. I then cut that sheet down. I take well, maybe three inches off or so, two and a half, three inches off there. And that means that the sheet will not um, get caught on the chest as you're looking down. End result, nice rigid, relatively clear through sheet. This then goes into the groove section on my band. You can see there's a tiniest little groove that runs just along here, not this part here just a tiny little uh, groove and that runs down the full depth. I take my sheet, my, my trimmed sheet, you'll notice that it has a sharp edge pointed 
Now one end of the beauty of laminate sheets is that you already have a nice rounded edge here. So the rounded edge is the part that's going to be down towards your chest and the sharp points are going to be into the headband itself. So I tried this earlier and <laughs> I messed up uh, A with the videoing and B with putting this in efficiently. I do 20 at a time uh, quite, quite quickly and one seems to be a problem. So our shield, face shield is actually in there. Okay, you'll notice that we have three holes. One, two, and three. Along with these holes, I create a number of pins. And when you receive your shield, you should have these already punctured. Now here I'm using a hole punch. You could use a scalpel, you could use anything really. And really what you want to do is make sure that's in place and just push it through. Take one of the pins and then just insert that. Now the central one might be slightly problematic and so what I've done with the central one is I upturn it like so. I put my two fingers in under there, my two fingers in here and I listen for a click as I push down. Okay. I'll come back to that click later because that can mean there's been a little crack created but you can see the pin is nice and relatively flush. So let's zoom back out again and then we get the next pin. Now you notice I haven't put all the three holes in and put the pins in. Reason for that is because as you put one pin in you might misalign the other side. So we'll just puncture it through the plastic laminate. Take another pin and I'm sure I trimmed all of these pins before I did this and you should hear them just click in. Again, if it's slightly extruding like this one is, you can see there, I just upturn it and this time I can just push down quite easily and that clips in place. And then I just test the last one, get my hole punch, push it through, get a pin, don't drop it on the ground, and then just put this pin in. So now what we have is we have a very solid, secure face mask. Now, if for whatever reason this laminate gets damaged or gets infected or whatever, if there's any need to change it, it is relatively easy to do so. So I go to my little toolbox and I could have a little sharp pliers, I could have a knife, I could have a dog tag, don't ask me why, um, possibly even a spoon, tweezers, or a trophy knife. Don't ask me why. So that I can just put in underneath the pin and just break the pin. Right. Don't want to use a knife. I just want to use a pliers to just prise this up gently. I can then just pull this out. Again, just I want to just prise this up gently. I'll pull that out. This one here I need to push right through one way or another because it's now damaged. But that's not a problem. Not a problem at all because as it comes out, my sheet can come out and I can now replace it with another one. So, easily replaceable. I'm quite happy to try and supply as many of these as I can to, to each batch I send out. So you have a backup. Guys, it's literally as simple as that. Um, these pins, sorry so far away, but these pins will hold it in place. Um, just 
replacing everything just try and make sure you put it in the right way so that the holes are lined up because I think two of the holes are slightly different so if you put it in what I'm going to say is back to front this is if you're replacing the same one for some reason if you're putting in back to front just make sure that the holes line up and away you go this could be for cleaning uh, you could be in the process of just making sure that everything's sterile and everything's fine and I'm, I'm, I totally go for it guys yeah do with this what you can I just hope it helps out <sighs> look guys I'm sorry I can't do enough um, we're, we're, we're trying and if I can get more and more and more out I, I will uh, so presently this is, uh, uh, let's just put this on and look silly for a little while and just remind people that you can stay safe. So, I don't know what you think. I hope this helps. Um, change change the laminate for for other materials, whatever, whatever suits you guys. So presently, I'm trying to get as much done for Stepping Hill as possible. Uh, I've just received an order from Blight um, house, which is a, a, a series of care homes in around uh, North Derbyshire, um, dealing with XL Care, which is based around Sheffield, um, sent some out there, and also the district nurses. Uh, they're no longer called district nurses. I think it's community community health or something something like that. But supplying them with quite a few as well to make sure that these guys are safe. Um, my daughter's coming down now so I don't want to be too morbid on this but that's the gist guys that's how it's put together that's how it's whatever cleaned so I've covered putting all of this together um, one of the things I want to highlight coupled with the original uh, start of this post was that these are all laid down in layers, layer upon layer upon layer. And if I was to print them like this, the layers would be all horizontal, but I print them like so, so the layers are, again, horizontal, but on the length. Which means that there are times when, and you won't be able to see it here, um, I'd imagine if I can catch, you can just see the lines if I catch the light. Sometimes these aren't as strong depending on temperature where I do it or stuff like that So you will when you're first putting in or messing around with your pins You may actually find that when you push in a pin it might give a little slice here In fact the slice might go across the length. That's easily repaired guys A uh, bit of super glue in there that'll be fine. Just make sure that you don't super glue um, Into the groove there or otherwise you won't be able to get your laminate in. Um, if it breaks completely, I mean, ladies and gents, these are a one-off. They'll last for a one session, or they'll last for six months, or ten years, whatever. As I said, I'll just make more of these, and I'll constantly make more. Presently, um, I've got around £165 worth of material coming, uh, hopefully in the next few days. That should allow me to make, oh God, maybe a thousand of these. So the shout is out to Chesterfield, the shout's out to Macclesfield, and as I said, I think I'm repeating myself, if there's anyone you know who could benefit from this, um, and I hate to be in a situation where I'm gonna to have to prioritize, but if there's anyone that you originally think could do with this frontline staff, you know, some of the nurses in various hospitals, whatever, where the PPE isn't actually getting there quick enough. And please, it's not a slate on the government, it's not a slate on anything. I understand procurement. Um, it's where basically you've got to order mass amounts and get it to the high-risk areas ASAP rather than buying bits and pieces and dribbling them here and there. Um, myself and a lot of the 3D printing guys out there, we're all trying to get up the shortfall for the short time. But the government's going to be in place. They've got to be in place. We've got to get these out to people. And I know that these are just like, you know, stop gaps. So just, just bear with me. But yeah, get in contact. 
send me a PM, send me a message, give me a bell if you have my number or whatever, and I'll see what I can do. Okay. I think that's it for me, guys. Um, you stay safe, sleep well, and um, just bury in there. Remember, keep your loved ones close and, um, and just enjoy this time together. And to those people out there on the front line, I can't thank you enough for everything you're doing for us. This is um, this is powerful shit, guys, and you're risking your lives every single day for, for the likes of me and the rest of us. And <laughs> clapping at eight o'clock can never be enough. All right. See you after all this is done and dusted. Cheers, guys.